A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's Kate and Oliver Hudson, <laughs> host of the new podcast, Sibling, Sibling Revelry. Revelry. That's right. We started this show because, you know what? No one talks about siblings and that dynamic. The siblings, they know each other better than anybody. Yes. You know. Listen to Sibling Revelry on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Episode 16, Meal Planning. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm Jen, your host for the Frugal Friend Podcast, joined by my other host, Jill. Here I am. You're not the only host. I'm here, too. There's two of us. <laughs> We're just silent dancing over here. <laughs> Don't mind us. Yeah. Um, because we are, um, spoiler alert, so excited to bring you another episode of the Frugal Friends podcast. And today's is a subject near and dear to my heart. It's mm. new planning. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. Um, how, how are you feeling about this one, Jill? Uh, I'm excited. Because I think I'm going to get some good tips. I've watched you meal plan. I've read your book about meal planning. I am co-hosting a Frugal Friends podcast about meal planning with you. I just feel prepared, but overwhelmingly excited. Uh, you, you're kind of like a, <laughs> you know it all by proxy, I think. You yeah. know more than you think. No, I. that's what I'm saying. I'm prepared. Yeah. And oh, I'm you've come and you've done your homework. Excited. <laughs> yes. Good. I know things this time. I know. You because you read my book, so like you yeah. pre- pretty much know everything. It's fine. <laughs> if um, you didn't want to listen to this episode, you can just pick up meal planning on a budget yeah. on Amazon. It's Definitely fine. buy it. It's really great. It's a it's a quick read and it's it's got great things in it and it will inspire you. Um, but also I'm excited about this because even if I'm not an expert, I, I eat. I'm one of those Ditto. people Ditto. who eats uh, every day. So it's, this is a good topic. No intermittent fasting here. <laughs> no, no <laughs> breatharians on this side of the screen. Eh, eh. I love food. <laughs> so speaking of books, Let's get into our sponsors for the day. Today's episode is brought to you by books. They can be a free resource of learning and also a frugal hobby. Don't have any money to take an online course? Get a book from the library. Need to know some knowledge to get a promotion and make more money at your job? Pick up a book at the library. And, And maybe, I don't know, maybe... You want to enjoy a frugal hobby with some friends. Get a book together. Books. Wow. You stunned me every time. It's not scripted. (laughs) Books are great. I'm using Eric's computer right now, and he doesn't know what to do with himself when he's not by his computer. And I suggested to him that he read a book. I don't think that's what he's doing, but <laughs> did he look at it funny? was a suggestion. <laughs> yeah. I don't read. <laughs> audio, audio books. Audio books. Yes. yes. <laughs> also found at the library. Yeah, you can find them at the library. Uh, also sponsored by podcastcrafter.com. You can actually visit this website, just like how you can actually get a book out of the library. Mm -hmm. Even if you aren't starting a podcast, but you're a little bit bored and you want to check out a cool website, then go to podcastcrafter.com. 
Or if you are starting a podcast or your business is starting a podcast or your corporation is starting a podcast or your nonprofit is starting a podcast, you should then definitely check them out because podcastcrafter.com has everything you need from creating you individualized soundtracks for your intro, outro segments, like our Bill of the Week segment. Isn't it so great? And then they can edit your voice to sound so good. Take out all your ums and likes and uhs even though we like to leave ours in because we're human and we're not perfect and you need to know that. (laughs) (laughs) We're also super humble. So it seems like we're perfect. So we just keep some of our ums and likes in there so that you know we are real, authentic. We're like you. We're, we're just like you. <laughs> we need to add more words to our vocabulary besides excited and podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we will do that. We promise. I am thrilled. Yes. For I, this exhilarating journey. I'm elated. Oh, that was a good one. Yes. Apparently, well, we also say yeah a lot. Yeah. 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 And I like that. I definitely do that. Should we start saying yes? Is that less annoying? (laughs) Anyhow. Anywho. We've got some good sponsors. We do. And we have some great content today. So I did a lot of research when I was writing um, the book Meal Planning on a Budget. And I found a lot of great websites and bloggers. And so I was so, for lack of a better term, excited to share some of them uh, on this particular episode. And uh, yeah, I have a a lot, almost as many things written down as Jill did in the DIY episode, but (laughs) not quite. (laughs) Not quite that many. (laughs) Oh man, that was my time to shine. You did, you wrote a book. That was not an outline. (laughs) All right. First article comes from The Kitchen. So this is a pretty popular blog, and I don't get a lot of recipes from here, but I do uh, find a lot of useful, like, tips and strategies from The Kitchen. So it's kitchen without an E. So K-I-T-C-H-N. Which is so cool. It's very cool to take out. time you uh, take out the vowels, that's when you know these people. But they're, they're still down to around. earth because they left the I. <laughs> yes, that's true. Some vows they'll keep. Yeah. Uh, this one's called The Beginner's Guide to Meal Planning, What to Know, How to Succeed, and What to Skip. Because like we always say, you don't have to do everything and you should not do everything. Mm. Uh, and I really liked that they pointed that out in here. Yeah. And, uh, I yeah. like that they broke it down into the three key steps that meal Mm -hmm. planning is. It just made it so simple, which it's obvious, but sometimes is worth repeating. You select recipes, you shop for your ingredients, and you prep your meals. Sometimes it can be feel so overwhelming, like, wait, what's all involved? There's so many things that I've got to do. And these are the basics. Yeah. And then fill in, fill in from there. Yeah. Because half of it is just like getting over that Uh, barrier to starting, there is a seemingly like high barrier to entry into the meal planning world because it is pretty intimidating, especially Mm -hmm. when you're like me. Like I uh, did not cook growing up. I did not have a mother that or grandmother that had like very extensive cooking skills. Mm -hmm. So when I decided to eat out less and to cook at home more, like that was horrifying in itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the only thing that made it a little less horrifying was to actually meal plan. And um, so, but but it is scary if you look at it the other way around from just like the cooking aspect. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I like how they start out the article by telling you like, first, what is meal planning? And essentially it's uh, taking out the argument like what's for dinner and like that... <laughs> You know that argument that you have, like, mm-hmm. what, well, I'll have, I'll have whatever, I don't care, and then the, they're like, well, I'll have whatever, I also don't care, right? So 
Or it's people with kids, that out. and you've got the what's for dinner tonight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that I mean, I remember asking that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's essentially just that, and then you also are able to then make a grocery list from there, and then to shop and like stay in budget because you have a list. Right. So it is. It's the tip of the iceberg to an underwater mound of savings. Whoa, I like that visual. Thank you. How far deep down into the iceberg are you? Um, I'm kind of like submerged, just my head. Like, I'm not really deep <laughs> like underwater. Like you're crawling down the iceberg? Yes. And like your yes. feet are in the water, but your head's out of the water? So like your feet are seeing more of the iceberg than your head is? Yeah. Because, okay. Because, I mean... <laughs> like I said, I'm not a, I don't love to cook. It's not, mm-hmm. I need to follow a recipe like line for line. I'm not a creative cook. Mm-hmm. Um, I still don't know like what flavors go well together. And even after years of following recipes, there is nothing that I just know how to cook besides spaghetti and grilled cheese, like off the top of my head. Everything <laughs> else, I need a recipe. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, I don't want to get too deep because that would overwhelm me. So I do. And that's one of the reasons I wrote the book because I know that I'm not alone. I know most people are like me. Mm -hmm. And so there's a way to do it that saves you money. That's also not overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's another thing that when they say what meal planning isn't, it's not the Holy grail. Mm -hmm. And people are obsessed with meal planning and they cite it as, you know, the, the God of, of savings in the grocery store. Um, but so it solves a lot of problems, but you have to tailor it to fit your needs because it's useless if you don't actually follow the plan. Yeah. I did like the list of things that meal planning is not. I think it gave me at least room to breathe because my life is very flexible Uh, and very last minute, very spontaneous. So I like that there is the freedom in it to say, meal planning doesn't mean that everything is entirely home cooked. Sometimes it includes the fact that you're going out with friends on Tuesday, or you're going to do pizza night on Wednesday, or you're going to go out to eat on Friday, whatever the case may be. It's just that you know what to expect. And then it's also in the budget. Mm-hmm. And and not that that can't be switched out. Okay, actually, we ended up hanging out with friends on Wednesday. So good thing our meal is just sitting in the freezer for whenever we're ready for it. Like you have to flex it to meet your needs. And that was the other thing. Yeah, it's not, it's not inflexible. Um, so that helped me to feel more comfortable with this because I see all these pictures online about meal planning and prepping. And it's like this beautiful fridge full of <laughs> perfect like glassware. Like everybody so walks organized. around with like, glassware and not, you know, mismatched plastics. And and the food looks amazing and perfectly proportioned. And there's like 10 different helpings of it's it's crazy. And I do like it's organization. Obnoxious. So it does look beautiful. But for me, I'm like, that would never, ever fit with my lifestyle right now. Like with mm-hmm. where I'm at in life, I cannot do that. That is overwhelming. So to read that, okay, there's a lot of ways to do this. That was like, oh, ooh, I can breathe now. Yeah. yeah let yeah. me see what works for me. Yeah. So you have to make it fit with your lifestyle. And that doesn't always mean planning seven dinners a week. Like you have to also plan for takeout, plan for dinners with friends, mm-hmm. um, plan for the variable of having to order in, um, having freezer meals available just in case. So you have to like put those in the meal plan too. Cause like nobody's perfect. And I never, like I've made perfect meal plans before that would be perfect if I perfectly executed them. Mm-hmm. And I've never perfectly executed them ever, <laughs> ever. Gosh, I don't think, I can't remember a time where I've cooked more than four meals in a week. Gosh, in like a year. Yeah. And what do I do with the other three meals a week? Gosh, last night I had <laughs> tater tots for dinner. Wow. Yeah, just that's all up, I could do. Just straight up tots. That That's the extent of... That's it. 
what I could Did manage Did you do yesterday. anything with it? You made it into some kind of like burrito thing, right? I burrito made it bowl. In, I, I dipped it into ketchup and put it in my mouth. Good for you. That's, That's real life. Yeah. Thank you so, for your vulnerability. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, nobody's perfect. Don't expect yourself to be perfect. <laughs> We're all just trying to make it. We're just trying to eat. Just trying people. to stay alive. <laughs> Sometimes I eat because I enjoy it, and other times I eat just because it's necessary. Usually sure. the latter more often than the <laughs> former. <laughs> it's a good thing you don't need much to eat, though. <laughs> I know. People make fun of us that we eat like birds, but man, it works. And when you're when you're around us, Travis and I are like gobbling things up. And <laughs> no. You and Eric are very delicate. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. I never want to be called that again. I'm sorry. You and your husband, you're just so delicate. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. No, that's all right. Um, graceful. You can call me graceful. Beautiful. Graceful. Gorgeous. Those words work. You oh, are, I'll allow you that. Are. All of those things, Jill. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Let's talk Roll about it back in. the actual like things that meal planning includes. Yes. Um, so starting out, you have to decide why you need to meal plan. For most of our listeners, it's going to be to save money. Um, but it's also going to include saving time, I think, because a lot of us are either working multiple jobs or like working late or some have kids. So those are the two things for me is like saving time and saving money. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then choosing your recipes. So this is a hard one for me because A, of my lack of skills in the kitchen and B, because I'm a vegetarian and well, I'm a pescatarian, so I will eat fish and Travis uh, eats all meat except for fish. <laughs> oh my <laughs> But he also has a very bland palate mm. where I like um, really spicy, like not just like heat spicy, but um, a lot of like variation in spice. And you like oysters. So that puts you in a different class oh of my people. Gosh. <laughs> that was not my finest hour. <laughs> no? No. It looked fine. It was fancy and I hated it. What? Um, it was... I felt guilty, like, Aww. eating those oysters because they cost money. And <laughs> we were with a friend, and he wanted to do an oyster tasting. And I was like, I've always wanted to do that. So I did it with him. And um, I just, I felt like I was eating the ocean and that I could have done that for free at the beach. Did you honestly not like it? I thought that you were enjoying it. I enjoyed, like, one or two of them. Okay. Yeah. Um but like then the ones that I didn't enjoy, I was like, ugh, I just bought this. Oh, I just bought that again. Whoa, yeah. He keeps handing them to me. Yeah. He did keep yeah. handing them to me. I had to tell him like, stop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was a point in there that I thought maybe he was giving them to you for free, even though you were saying stop, but that wasn't the case. No, it wasn't. It was <laughs> deceptive. Um, but anyhow, so recipe choosing like recipes for me is a little difficult. Uh, I think that I'm an anomaly in there, but I think, uh, most people will have like a set number of recipes, like after they've been doing it for a while, like maybe like 10 or 20 that you can make consistently and that you can master. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you're like me, then you just like have a very hard time eating the same thing twice. Yeah. So you spend way too much time looking at recipes on Sundays. What about you, Jill? Yeah. Oh, my word. Well, where to start? Because this has been such a journey for me in that just meals in general for the past six years, it's just been difficult for me. And I've had to give myself grace for the different seasons of life that I've been in. Uh, and I feel like I'm getting into a better rhythm now than I previously was. I, I don't know what we just did a lot of takeout when I would work until eight or nine at night and I was working with trauma and then back at it the next day. There just literally wasn't time. And then it was, how do I want to spend my time? And the answer 
answer was definitely not in the grocery store, in the kitchen, doing dishes, all, you know, everything that's involved with this. So anyhow, the best thing that I have found that works for me, and and we did talk about this in our food episode, uh, but a, a good friend of mine and I will get together occasionally and plan out meals. Um, and make them in bulk and freezer mm-hmm. meals. So for me, that's been my flexible thing that has worked through the years is, okay, I don't know whether or not I'm going to be home tonight, but there is a meal in the freezer I could pull out. But if I don't use it, it's not going to waste. It's still in the freezer. Because that was the biggest thing was, okay, I, I could pull, I could plan ahead, but if I pull something out and thaw it, I may not eat it that week. And now, mm-hmm. now it's thawed sitting in the fridge and going bad. Um, yeah. So that's, that has been like a lifesaver for me, definitely, is the the whole freezer meal thing. Yeah, I loved that recommendation when you gave it on that episode. And I mm-hmm. still haven't found anybody to do that with. But I'm you on could the do it by yourself, but I yeah. have done it by myself, but it sounds better to do it with friends. It definitely is. Yeah. Another thing, so I know that this this article went in order of find your recipes, buy your ingredients, prep your ingredients. I switched it up this past week where I just looked to see what was on sale and bought the, you know, the main thing. So I'm not a pescatarian or a vegetarian. So we do eat meat. And normally that is kind of what I plan my meals around. So I just found whatever I could, whatever meat I could find cheap. (laughs) That ended up being ground chicken, ground Mm -hmm. turkey, some sausage, some chicken legs. And then I went back and and then searched. So that provided me with a little bit more rather than like what to cook for dinner. It was a little bit easier to say what, okay, I've got some sweet potatoes and ground turkey. Are there recipes that have sweet potatoes and ground turkey in it? And the internet's great for that. And sure enough, there mm-hmm. are. Um, yeah. And then Pinterest is great for being able to save recipes. And if you like them, keep them. Um, if you don't get rid of them. Yeah. And another thing is when there's like super sales on meat, you can buy them and put them in the freezer and then you have them. You can do your meal planning around those like deep discounts right? Uh, and uh, and still be able to plan before you go to the grocery store too. But I'm right. all about doing like meal planning around sales. I think that's mm-hmm. the way you should do it if you're trying to save the most money. And yeah. It's one of the reasons that I don't lo- always love meal planning apps. And I think a lot of them are getting better or meal planning services that do it for you. Mm. A lot of them are getting better about doing seasonal produce, but they can't do like what's on sale for you at your nearest store. Like they, they will not target that specifically. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's always cheaper to do it yourself for that reason. Right. Yeah. And that you have to make that fun for you. So whatever that means. Yeah. For me, it it is often like a Sunday or an evening and to be able to scroll through recipes with things that I have and a beverage I enjoy, maybe put on a show, like whatever it is, like make it fun. Something that you enjoy doing. Not necessarily, Mm -hmm. you don't have to like look forward to it, but it's an activity and it doesn't have to be a chore. If there's some little incentive things that you can build into that time of planning out what you're going to make, that helps. Yeah. And another thing that I liked that they were saying um, in this vein is to make a master inventory list of your pantry Mm -hmm. and your fridge and stuff. So I've done this before, and but I'm not like good at doing it like religiously. But to make a list of everything you have so that you can plan based on what you already have. Yeah. And um, like you were saying with the Pinterest and the internet, just look for combos that might look good together. And then the mm-hmm. internet shall provide. Yeah, they definitely do. And then you can get deeper into this. And I'm just scratching the surface on this, but prepping out. So for me, again, this would be a meat, Jen, I don't know, it could be like a, like one particular vegetable that could be the base for a bunch of different things. But for me, it's prepping 
one meat that then can be used in a variety of different things. So whether Mm. that be like chicken, you cook up the chicken, some of it you shred for some kind of like pulled chicken barbecue recipe. Others, other shredded parts you keep for, you know, like a taco thing. Then other parts you don't shred and you put a marinade on it. Other Mm. parts you cube and you do this with it. And usually also like whole chickens are cheaper cheaper, than buying them cut up butchered, however you yep, yep. you want to say that. Um, so that's a territory that I'm starting to get into. Recently, nice. I breaded a bunch of chicken. So I got uh, chicken breasts on sale and I slice mine up hardcore. It depends on how big your chicken breasts are. I ha- I've not ventured into like organic at this point. Um, <laughs> so mine are hefty. <laughs> Large breasted chicken. And so I am able to get like three cutlets out of one breast of chicken by like slicing part of it off, then slicing it in half again, pounding it out a little bit, um, and then just breading it like egg, breadcrumbs, saute it in a pan and freeze it. So I've got like 10 to 15 of these cutlets in the freezer that now I can just grab and go. I can heat them up, throw them on a salad. It could be used in chicken parm. There's a lot of different options with just like that one thing that that I now have in the freezer. So I'm excited about that too. Like it, it's not a full meal. It's not a casserole that's frozen in the freezer. But I've got my base that a lot of times then inspires me to cook. So, okay, I know that I've got this chicken in the freezer. Oh, and I just got asparagus. Boom, like dinner's done. Just pull them out, thaw, you know, like pop them in the toaster oven and saute your asparagus and you've got dinner. So I think just like the ease of it helps me get over that, oh, I've got to cook dinner tonight uh, kind of a thing. Yeah. Which is meal prepping, right? (laughs) Right. And even on like back to the meal planning, if you got something like a, a large portion of something that was on sale, even if you use half of it and freeze the other half for later, you're not going to be eating, you know, like ground beef for seven days to where you get tired of it. You know, you'll eat it for a few days. And because that's what I do. Like I can't prep the same thing all week. Some people can cook on Sunday and like eat it for five days straight. And I cannot do it. Not because I don't like leftovers, just because I get bored. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, and so back, oh, and back to the grocery list before I forget. So that master list, I was thinking, and I haven't tried this yet, but as I was reading the article, I was thinking, what if I did the master list on like my tablet or phone and then put my sh- grocery list under, like on top of it or underneath it? And then like when I'm done shopping, that co- becomes the master list. And then when I go to go to the grocery store again, I can just delete whatever I'm out of or like change the proportions. Like it would be super, super easier than writing it out every week. Right. Um, Yeah. You don't want to do that. Yeah. So you're saying when you run out of something at home, there'd be a way to like move it then to your shopping list. Yeah. Move to the shopping list or Uh just delete it if you don't need it. Okay. So I've been looking into grocery apps and, uh, but I think it could just be done on an, in the note app. Mm -hmm. honestly, like I'm not big on a lot of apps. Yeah. That could definitely save a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Every time I do this kind of thing in bulk, I'm always like, okay, I usually have lemon juice on hand, but what about now? That'd be nice to have. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And that's just, you know, another part of the iceberg we'll get to someday. we, (laughs) We could, I mean, we'll definitely have more meal planning, prepping, you know, zero waste type episodes in the future, but like we could just go on and on. Mm -hmm. We'll keep it, we'll keep it light and focus mostly on planning and prepping today. Mm -hmm. Those beginning things. Yeah. And so, yeah, the article recommends spending an hour on Sunday prep. I have spent as much as four hours. I don't recommend it. I have actually spent more than that because there was one day I got really ambitious. I made nine freezer meals in a day by that myself. That is amazing. You should have had a friend with you, but I should have had a friend. I shouldn't have done it, uh-huh. for being honest. <laughs> but I bet you were happy when you had those meals to pull out. I did. I did it because it was nine weeks before we 
paid off our debt. And so I made one for every week as a just in case. Whoa, that's Mm -hmm. cool. And then as you see it dwindle in your freezer, you know, you're closer and closer. Yeah, it was (laughs) good. But I only recommend doing that with like, tried and true recipes. Cause I did, I made one recipe as a freezer meal and I made, I made one and then I froze one mm-hmm. and I ended up not liking the one that I made. So now I've had the freezer version sitting in there for a while. <laughs> so to- take it to a friend after they give birth or something. Oh, yeah. Look, I made this for you. <laughs> as long as they don't listen to this podcast, I'm so going to do that. Even if they do, just be like, oh, this isn't that one. <laughs> it's not that meal. Right, right, right. I love this one. Perfect. Ah, oh, Jill, I'm so thankful for you. <laughs> yeah. Let nothing go to waste. <laughs> Key. All right. And so then they uh, they just... They don't really cover a lot of prep, um, but that's okay. Spoiler alert. We know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, this means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. oracle.com slash strategic. Anything else from this article you liked, Jill? No, that was good. It's worth the read, but I think we covered it. And also The Kitchen has a lot of other articles about meal prepping. And so I liked this uh, article in particular because you'll be able to see the links to uh, other things too. So definitely head over to our show notes uh, so you can check out this article. Yeah. And our next one uh, is all about meal prep. It's Meal Prep 101 from my favorite, well, one of my top favorite recipe blogs, Budget oh. Bites. Mm-hmm. You've tried the recipes from here. and you Yes. Like, um, oh, oh, my gosh. Okay, so I have a like, good tip. I have three blogs that are my favorites to get recipes from. Um, Budget Bites is one. They have vegetarian and non-vegetarian foods. Mm. Um, the other is Cookie and Kate. She is strictly vegetarian. Uh, and then I like Minimalist Baker, who's vegan. Uh, and I will sometimes like non-veganize her food. Mm -hmm. So those are, if you're trying to do a meatless Monday, Cookie and Kate, she's just the best. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. 
It's good to know. I feel like I've got a lot of, not a lot of, but some friends who will find recipes not on the traditional sites of, you know, all recipes or Mm food.com and man, they come up with some amazing things. And I'm like, how do you come across this? So I appreciate the tip. I think it helps me to find some creative food options. Yeah. Um, So uh, Beth writes Budget Bites and she has just some of the best recipes and she does a lot of meal prep recipes. And there's a difference in meal prep between um, the fitness community and <laughs> maybe the personal finance community. But it's also, I could have just, I could have made this version up in my head uh, because it helped me. And I just assumed it's what helped everybody, but maybe not. Uh, and so in the fitness community, it's all about cooking all your meals and then putting them in containers. And then essentially you're eating leftovers all week. Right. And in my mind, in my life, it has been like pre-chopping vegetables and like Mm -hmm. grouping things together with like spices and stuff Mm -hmm. so that when I have to cook throughout the week, I can literally like Mm -hmm. just turn it on, dump, Mm -hmm. and then be done. I like your way. It's much more attainable, much more practical for how food needs to like how food tastes best Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, not as time consuming. I got to experience this with you in when we visited a couple months ago now. And yeah, it's, it was, it didn't take that long. Like we did it for an hour, hour and a half and man, did it make the rest of the week easy. Mm -hmm. Cause when you're cooking food and then eating it as leftovers, it lasts for about three to, you know, three to four days. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then if you chop it, it's going to last about the same amount, but then you cook it and you've basically like extended its life Mm -hmm. a few more days. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it depends on the food that you're chopping. Of course, Uh, some do better than others, but gosh, I can't, I can't think of a food that I haven't had meal prep success with. Right. But, Why couldn't yeah. you chop things? The yeah, and then they've got these pictures online of their apples per- perfectly proportioned and the crackers in the little containers. Which where do you even buy those like partitioned glass containers? Amazon. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but they're that's not just her not. Favorites. It's just not practical because they're going to brown. Like, it looks pretty for the picture, but they're going to brown. Mm-hmm. Crackers in the fridge will get soggy. Like, you you wouldn't do that. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot... There, there are a lot of things right and a lot of things wrong mm-hmm. with with the this version. But... Right. Uh, she also, like, she has some good tips, uh, if I can remember them. Gosh. So, she... Definitely recommend starting small, which Mm -hmm. is also what we recommend. It could just be like planning, like prepping your stuff, and then just prepping enough so to ensure you have leftovers. Mm -hmm. It could be that. And then you like elevate to um, doing like your lunches. Like sometimes I will pre prepare salmon um, to do salmon salads. And yeah, that'll be a good one. Like I'll. I'll make three or four salmon salads and then I'll be done with salmon for a few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and that was the one thing. I don't know that I agree. I mean, the way that Budget Bites define meal prepping as making is as making everything ahead of time, which I think that there can be variety, but then she says meal prepping isn't for everyone if you're defining it that way mm-hmm. because it's not great for people who who like variety in their food. So I think that that's a pretty narrow definition, but could work for some people. I think it is helpful to take the more balanced look at it. Does, you don't have to prepare everything, even though that's how they define it in this article. Yeah, um, it is what most people would define. And I think... right. Yeah, like I don't find a lot of people that define meal prepping as 
the way I do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. I tried to yeah. find it, but, you know, whatever. Well, I it's, like it. Thank you. It's, you know what? Either way is good because mm-hmm. it ensures that you, like, this one ensures that you will have lunch, uh, you know, all the days. And the other way lowers the barrier to entry to cook, you know, when you've been working for nine hours and get home and just want to like mm-hmm. order in. Like mm-hmm. literally if you can dump some things in an instant pot and it be ready in a half hour while you take a nap, like that's mm-hmm. my kind of cooking. That is why I got an instant pot because that is my kind of cooking. Mm-hmm. The yeah. kind that keeps me out of the kitchen. Yeah. There's a way to figure out how it's going to work for you, definitely. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, this is this is great. And then, I mean, also we'll leave the link to my book that I kind of go through yeah. all of the ways that I, like, meal prep. And I don't do a lot any... Like, I've been through phases where I'll do it, I won't do it, I'll spend four hours doing it. And now I'm just kind of at a point where, like, I'll chop most things. Uh, I might not chop, like, tomatoes or Mm -hmm. soft fruits. Um, But, and then I'll just, you know, get out a really tiny cutting board instead of the big one. Mm -hmm. So there's less. Oh, also dishes. Dishes is another reason I meal meal prep. Yeah. Uh, Because I would rather use the same dishes and chopping all the things than take the cutting board out, chop something Monday, Mm. wash it, chop something Mm -hmm. else Tuesday. Like I can't Mm -hmm. do it. And it's surprising how many ingredients carry over. You could Mm -hmm. find yourself chopping carrots on three different occasions and then why not just have done it all in one day? Yeah. And some of those things can be frozen. Don't try it with celery. Celery is cheap enough anyhow, but man, did I learn that one the hard way. I was like, I got leftover celery because everyone always has leftover celery. Who uses the entire stalk? So that's a whole other internet rabbit trail that I went down one day. But uh, (laughs) nobody, nobody uses the, the freezing celery. Just don't. Do it. Unless put it you're in your it in compost. Soup. Unless you're putting oh, it in a soup. Never which mind. I, have done. I stand corrected. Go but for that's it. Really Freeze it. your celery. <laughs> Freeze that thing. Yeah. But other other things can freeze. Pretty much any type of vegetable that you can buy in the freezer section at the grocery store, you could try it yourself at home. Yeah. Yeah, which can be convenient. Sometimes um, I'll freeze up, you know, chopped veggie, veggies if I just have a little bit left over. And then it's like, oh, I've got enough for a little omelet. Pull that one out. Yeah. Stir it up with an egg. <laughs> it's funny that we're talking about this because I just tried to minimize or like thin this window out. And the ad got stuck in the middle of the page. And it's just an ad. It's like Martha Stewart with her two Sharpays. Just staring me in the face, like while I'm trying to read this meal planning. <laughs> Who would she's, you rather look at, me or Martha Stewart? She's super judging me. Yeah, but I love her. I think that's just her face all the time. I love it. <laughs> you know what else I love? Tell me. Uh oh. I love my favorite time of the week. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> it is that time. It's time for. The The Bill of the Week! That's right! It's time for the best minute of your entire week! Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton... This is the Bill of the Week. Hi, I'm Allison Baggerly from Inspire Budget, and my Bill of the Week is an insurance plan, a long-term disability insurance plan that jumped up to $80 a month, which we canceled and found a cheaper option available through my job. Awesome. That is amazing. Shopping around is definitely one of the best frugal tips out there. And it's leaving... You- you nope. suggested them as a sponsor for the day. I did. You did. <laughs> Before we even heard the bill. That could have been full circle. That that whole 
you know what? I don't like this price. I'm going to go find lower. You know, it's like in real estate. No, well, I don't know. actually real estate is... <laughs> It's location, location, location. Okay, what okay. I'm actually thinking is the stock market. <laughs> Buy low, sell high. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a stretch, Jill. Yeah, it's like, uh, not a good price. I'm out. I'm going to find a better deal. How do we make, that, like- a, how do we make that a motto? <laughs> how can we fit it on a bumper sticker? <laughs> yes, that's always the question. You that's tell amazing, me. That's amazing, though. Good yes. for you for just sticking it to the man, not taking that eighty dollar bill. Yeah, finding a cheaper option. That was this. That was the uh, slogan of the place I used to work for because it was an acupuncture clinic. Uh, so it was sticking it to the man. Nah. <laughs> yes, I would never think shirts. that an acupuncture place would get so like play on words, like silly, goofy with it. Yeah, my boss also wanted to uh, open like an anarchist bookstore oh. in the space too. So he was he was into it. That's funny. Yeah. Instacart shoppers know groceries. They know that you can't make guacamole with rock hard avocados. They know how to quickly find those peanut butter pretzels you can never find, and they keep you in the know by giving you updates about your order along the way. Let Instacart shoppers help take shopping off your plate so you can get time and energy back for what really matters. Visit instacart.com or download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $10. Additional terms apply. Instacart. Add life to cart. When you call Consumer Cellular's customer support to discuss our affordable and flexible phone plans, it's like you're calling the Declaration of Independence or a hot dog at a baseball game. Because Consumer Cellular's customer support is based entirely in the United States. And Consumer Cellular's customer support agents are from where you're from. The same small town that you're from. The one that stretches from California to Maine, Minnesota to Corpus Christi, Texas. The one that cares about its neighbors and lights fireworks, legal ones, in the street. So the next time you want to make a phone call that feels like an American flag waving at an air show at Magic Hour, give us a call. Even if it's for no reason at all, except to exchange barbecue sauce recipes like a couple of Americans. Or make jokes about Canadians. LOL. Just kidding. We love Canadians. They're our neighbors. Consumer Cellular. When freedom calls, we're here to answer. Call us at 1-888-FREEDOM. Okay. Let's do a little personal take on these. I've already given my personal take on (laughs) meal prepping. But you know I have more opinions oh, than my just word. that. Yeah, give it to us, Jen. Gosh, okay. Um, so one thing that I really like is to, without reading the entire book, um, is to have a template. And that for sometimes people do like Meatless Monday, Taco Tuesday, like just have something you can expect. Mm. Uh, so if that's maybe like one Asian meal Uh, one Mexican cuisine meal, one slow cooker meal. So when you're getting started, it's really easy to find recipes if you just know like this is what I'm looking for, looking for one of these, one of these, and one of these. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that's a really good way to get started. Um, Yeah. Jill, do you have any? Yeah. uh, So I think... And this is, again, a skill that you can build upon, but utilizing leftovers. And I don't just mean, all right, the casserole we had last night, just throw it in the microwave. I mean, all right, I only used half of a pepper in that recipe. So now what else can I use this in? And incorporating them into the next dishes, either with another recipe or if you do know the flavors that you like and the types of foods that you like. So for instance, I I use that example because that's what happened to me this week where I only needed <laughs> half of a pepper for my casserole and then I used the other half of the pepper in a cold pasta salad. So mm. that was really convenient. And and it also then helped me to get creative. Like, well, now I've got half a pepper. I just want to dice this up and throw it in something. So what can I throw this into? So um, starting to think through 
if you don't use all of your ingredients, what else could you throw it towards? Yeah. I love that. Um, and then also, um, meal planning 201 is what Mm -hmm. I call it. Mm -hmm. Um, elevating to batch planning. And so this is part of that deep iceberg that I have not ventured onto yet. Mm -hmm. Um, but once you get like a group of, you know, 20, 30 recipes that you know you love, you can plan the whole month. If yeah. you are kind of knowing, I think this is especially good if you have kids mm-hmm. um, because they don't have a lot of foods that they like anyway. It's usually, you know, they will eat five meals. <laughs> but like to plan the whole month out, you can look at your kids' schedules, you can look at your spouse's schedule, and you can kind of just do that all in one fell swoop. And then you don't have to worry about meal planning at all for the rest of the month. You kind of lose the um, weekly sale aspect of that. Um, but it's really great if you already have like deep discount sale stuff in the freezer already. So you can plan to use that over the month and just accumulate like deep discounted stuff over that month, um, to just include in the next month. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I can't harp on keeping it simple and starting small enough. Mm -hmm. And I think for anybody out there who's like me, I would say, get over the barrier of feeling locked in. If you make a meal plan, just, just try it, just write it down. So do a quick scan of your freezer, your fridge, what you've got in your house and just write, you know, just start on your calendar. All right, Monday night, what do I have? We're going to try, we're going to do this, this, this. And that can include, like we've said, a a freezer pizza. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Just throw that in the oven. It just, there's something that feels so good about being able to look at the calendar and already having a plan. Now, then be flexible. It will change. Like guarantee you if you're anything like me, like even mm-hmm. the slightest bit, like come Friday, you are not going to end up doing what you wrote down, but at least you wrote it down. And then you have an idea that you could then pull on for Saturday or switch your days around, but just, exactly. just try writing something down for each night of the week and make it simple and start small and then go from there. You might get encouraged to keep going with it and you might get better at it. Definitely. That's that's a good word, Jill. Mm, it good felt word. good. You it know, is. as it word. was coming out of my mouth, I'm like, this is a good word. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yes, girl. Um, and then last thing I will say on like meal kits and made for you meal plans. Um, definitely the meal kits are not justifiable if you're trying to save money. I know some people will try to justify them, but there are enough like you can definitely Google mm-hmm. studies and tests out there that mm-hmm. tell you that they're not. So if you're yeah. thinking about it, like don't bother. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could do the free trial just to yes. get a taste for this is what it's like to have all my food in the fridge for the mm-hmm. entire week. And this is what I can do with it. And then do it yourself. Run exactly. with that. Keep those recipes. Look up other cool recipes. And and run with that. Use that as a catalyst to do it yourself. Yeah. Those free and discounted trials do actually help when you're like super new to cooking. Uh, so I would say if you're going to do it, take advantage of all of the free trials or the discounted trials right up front mm-hmm. um, and then just venture off on your own. Yeah. Um, and then the made for you meal plans. Uh, the only one that I have found and I've tried quite a few because doing this for a long time does get tiring. And so there have been times where I've supplemented with meal plans that, you know, were made for me. And I always (laughs) go back to doing it myself, but I don't knock the made for you meal plans at all because Mm -hmm. they have, they've really saved me time and my life Mm -hmm. in some seasons. But Mm -hmm. um, of the ones that I've tried, I've really liked cook smarts because they go through all of the steps from the planning to the grocery list to ways to prep exactly like I like to prep by like doing the chopping just preemptively. Um, So they have been 
it's very rare that I find something that like meets all of my specifications for loving something. And Cooksmarts really does. They even have like, she's a cooking class for people that want to learn like proper knife techniques and, and all nice. that stuff. But yeah. So like, it's a really all encompassing. Oh, and the meal plans often have videos yeah. for like, if there's a technique or um, a random like ingredient. Oh. So they'll have like replacements and alternative ways to cook things. Oh, wow, it's and, also and videos to, like to help you. An investment in yourself yes. too. Not only are you feeding your body, you're feeding your mind and you're growing a skill. Yes. Like it's like you're learning a new language. Yeah. And you can actually get three free weeks of meal planning. Um, if you go do frugalfriendspodcast.com slash cook smarts, um, you'll get your first three weeks of meal planning for free. And you'll have access to those recipes even after your free trial ends. Wow. Yeah. That's like exciting. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. There it is with my, my exciting word. I know. <laughs> if we're going to expand our vocab, we have to do it. We have to be prepared in advance and write it in the outline. <laughs> what are some synonyms for exciting? Because I'm <laughs> left saying it a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we won't do this naturally. All right. Yeah. Jill, do you want to uh, introduce our surprising new thing <gasps> yes so okay. in line with our sponsor this week which is books we Woo. are introducing the frugal friends book club that's right reading is fantastic and even if you don't like to have your nose in a book all the time you can definitely still get down with an audiobook so either way you slice it like th this is just fantastic what we're about to do and what you're about to be a part of. So we're going to read one frugal book every month. We'll start in September with The Year of Less by Kate Flanders. Kate did a two-year shopping ban that changed not just her finances, but also her life. So we're going to give away the book for free. We are literally doing that. Even though we're super frugal, we are buying the book for you. And we're giving it away for free. But That's hear me rightly, there are strings attached. <laughs> <laughs> so we're go it's going to be like a, um, it's a giveaway. But so the way you can enter the giveaway is we're going to uh, give one copy um, for every five reviews we get in the month of August. So in order to enter, you can leave us a review um, on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you listen to the podcast and screenshot that and then email frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. And we will select all the winners. There's no cap. So if we get 500 reviews, we're giving away a uh, hundred copies. Quick of math, Kate's quick book. math. Good job. I know, Jen. right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I'm going to call Kate and just, she's going to be super excited. I don't have Kate's number, um, but I will. <laughs> If I sell hundred copies of, if I buy a hundred copies of her book, Seriously, I'll get her number. There's got to be some sort of kickback there. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> if you want to uh, read the Year of Less with us, mm. um, then give us a review and send that into Frugal Friends Podcast at gmail dot com um, before August August thirty first. But this is going to be a rolling thing. So like after we finish this one, then we will be doing like raffling off. Um, for the next month's book too. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of reviews, if you're wondering how you should leave us a review, here's our review of the week to help you craft yes. yours. It's from Bookkeeping Artists. And she says, I love Jen and Jill. They are queens of frugality. Whoa. I'm happy they're here to help us cut through the BS and the overwhelm of finance advice by dissecting what works and what's fluff. So Whoa. That was a killer review. I like it. Oh, she says also, the best quote so far, the best way to not spend money is to spend time making it. <laughs> yeah. 
You said the bookkeeping Jen. <laughs> I know. Next week, you're going to have to read one because I seem to find the ones that compliment me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Queens of, what was Queens. it? Queens of frugality? Wow. Queens. Wow. That is something else. My mom doesn't even call me a queen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you can leave us a review just as cool as that. It, it, or maybe cooler. Who knows? Yeah. And you will either be in the running to be read on our podcast while also in the running to also receive a free book. So yeah, it's more likely that you will receive a free book because there's no limit to those, but we only do one show per week. <laughs> yes. Which is but, the higher honor? Who knows? Right. Who knows? <laughs> oh, Yeah, but you can be a part of our book club either way. Whether or not you win, we can still discuss. And we will be talking about the book club in our Frugal Friends community group that you can find at frugalfriendspodcast.com slash group. It is a private Facebook group where we talk about all kinds of frugal things. We throw out all kinds of gifts and... If you know somebody... As in like GIFs, not like we're throwing like gifts at people. Right. We're not rich here, okay? <laughs> we're not made of money. <laughs> Let's not get say. carried away. Just, yeah. just free books here and there. Free, a few free books. For uh, your review. For your five-star review. Yes. If you <laughs> know someone who could use a frugal friend, A, you should hang out with them. And B, you should tell them about the podcast and the Facebook group. Yes. We are always in the market for new friends and, (laughs) you know, we like each other, but we get bored. Uh, I mean, so read a book if you're bored, Jen. You hang out with friends because it's fun and and exciting. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, if you like hanging out with us and we don't make you bored, (laughs) you should definitely hit the subscribe button. Uh, so you can get a new episode every Frugal Friends Friday. And as always, all these links can be found on our show notes that Jill so laboriously handcrafts. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. That sounds intense. Jill, yeah. what it, do you have to say for it yourself? It is that intensive. <laughs> you should check it out because I spend time on it. And she I'm does. pretty convinced no one looks at them, but you should I look now. at them. Well, of course, you're my co-host. You've got to make sure I'm doing it right. And I just love them. (laughs) All right, y'all. We will see you next week with another episode. Take care. See ya. Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Siriano. Pew, pew, pew. Pew. Bow, bow. Meow. You sound like a cat, like a robot cat. Yeah. I'm trying to be one of those people who make like weird music that like you just wouldn't understand, but it's, it's genius art. Yeah, I do understand. You're a robot cat. <laughs> <laughs> Try again. <laughs> See, and you only got that because it was so genius. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm that smart. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be an awesome season. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.